this is my first year gardening here. This is gonna be my first large scale garden and I'm very, very excited about it, so. Welcome back to Calico Cow Acres. I'm Michaela. Today I'm going to walk you through my seed starting setup and how I start my seeds, how I plan out my seed starting, all that kind of stuff. I know you're probably seeing a lot of these videos right now. It's still fun to participate in and everybody's are a little bit different so I really enjoy watching them and I like pulling bits and pieces from different people to make a system that kind of like works best for me so I hope you do the same and I hope you like this video. Basically in this video my plan is to one, talk to you guys about the plants I'm the seeds I'm starting today to go through my goals for the year or at least some of them there are a lot since this is going to be our first spring and summer season at our homestead everything here is brand new to us we're still setting up garden beds we're still renovating our house and working full-time and all that kind of stuff trying to manage this garden season as well so I have to be really organized, so I'm gonna show you how I plan out my garden as well. And then um, lastly, I'm going to walk you through all of my seed starting supplies, and I will have them either linked in my Amazon storefront below, or if they're not Amazon products, um, or if you can't find them on Amazon, I'll put the links in the description below. Looking for all these cold weather things. So I think I finally got all of the ones out that I wanted to. So I'm just going to show you what I'm starting today, or tonight I guess. Uh, so we're going to start Brussels sprouts. This, this, this is definitely not going to be the only time that I'm starting Brussels sprouts this year, but I just got some greenhouse plastic and some really janky hoops that I'm going to try out and see if they work. Just because they were super cheap and I figured why not. I have the beds set up. So I am going to be trying the, I don't know how to, I'm really not good at pronouncing things, so I'm sorry if I say stuff wrong, but I'm just going to say it how I've been saying it in my head. So, Groninger, Red Rubine, or Red Rubin. These ones look like little skulls, and it's kind of cool. They're like, I don't know, they give me sugar skull vibes. <laughs> They're pretty cool. Those are also from Baker Creek. And then, so we're starting a lot of brassicas this week. I have... Both of these packages are from Etsy. They're from Seed Geeks. So, it's Red Acre Cabbage. That is the only cabbage I have that I plan on starting. I don't know if I have any more. So since we just got all of our stuff out of storage in Michigan and brought it down here to North Carolina, I haven't seen all of the seeds that are in these packets since last year. So I don't really necessarily know fully what I have. My seed catalog that I have in here has a good bit of them. Like it has most of them, but I'm finding that like I got some seeds later on that I just like forgot to put into my seed catalog, so there's some surprises. <laughs> Zelagic Farm and Garden um, was the shop, and this is Waltham 29 Broccoli, which is like the head broccoli. And then I have some Broccoli Rob Spring Rapini and some Purple Sprouting Broccoli. I'm only going to start one tray tonight, so then I'm also going to be starting Lavender. So. This seed is pretty old. I wasn't able to get it to sprout very well last year. I'm gonna try it just to give it one more shot. Um, this is from 2018. Lavender is notoriously hard to germinate anyway, and I did not successfully do this last year, so I'm gonna try it again, pay better attention to it, and see if I can get it to work. And then I do have two new packets of lavender seeds, so I have um, that one was just common, like, English lavender, and then I have Vero lavender, and that's from M.I. Gardener. Uh, the other one was just a Berkey package, and then I got, also from M.I. Gardener, I got Munstead lavender. So, those are fresh seed from this year, so we'll see if I can actually germinate those. I will keep you posted on that. And once they germinate, if they germinate, I will come back in, and I will write the date that they germinated, how many of them germinated, and then calculate the percentage. 
I'll actually probably do that in my digital like spreadsheet version of this because then it's just there and I don't have to keep track of this piece of paper. I will actually keep this. This is like my little seed starting layout that I'm gonna use. I don't know if you can see this. It's super bright in here because I have my, I just got the lights and all my plants, my seed starting supplies set up. So it's very bright in here, but you can see I just did one of these tray layouts and like filled it out for how many I'm going to do of each. All right, so the next thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is just my general garden goals for this year. I have a lot of goals for our homestead for this year. 2023 is hopefully gonna be a big year for us. As you know, we're renovating our house. We have to budget for a furnace because we don't want all the mold to come back to this house come summer. So that is kind of taking all of our money and then we're also going to be getting chickens and ducks come June. They were supposed to come in April, but some sort of, we ended up having a scheduling conflict with a family thing that we have to do. So they are now coming for my birthday in June, which is pretty cool. We'll need to be building a chicken coop soon and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see how much attention the garden and the rest of the homestead get. That's gonna be the two primary costs of this year, I believe. My first goal is to actually grow enough of something, literally anything, that I can preserve at least one jar of it. That's kind of a crazy goal, I know, but I just, I've, I've been, I've been dreaming of gardens and doing like container gardens and last year we had, we were set up to do like a nice big garden in our backyard in Detroit and then we moved. So I haven't gotten to actually like preserve any of the stuff I've grown because of all these circumstances. So this year I am determined to preserve something that I grew, whether that's one jar of pickles, that's fine one jar of tomato sauce, I'm fine with that, as long as I can preserve something that I grew. <laughs> I also plan on preserving a bunch of stuff that is from the store or the local markets just in season, like throughout the year. But I want to preserve one thing that I grew myself. As you'll see in the video on Sunday, I really, really want to get, I'm really working on getting garden beds set up my goal is to have half of the garden space, half of the overall garden space set up by summer so that I can actually be um, like planting in those beds. It's probably not gonna be like the finished beds, but they'll be in their general locations. Eventually they might have raised bed, there might be partially raised beds, there's gonna be nicer trellises and whatnot eventually. But this year my goal is to get the actual beds themselves just like usable. Another goal that it's more of just like a checklist item i need to figure out how i'm going to deal with bunnies and deer i'm already having issues with something munching on my garlic and the garlic is supposed to deter things <laughs> so i know i see deer i see bunnies whenever we take move for walks outside there are bunnies all over the place that he chases and we see deer out of our windows often so I know I'm gonna have issues with deer and bunnies and probably some other things too, but I'm guessing that those are gonna be my biggest issues. So I need to research and figure out how to deal with them as much as I possibly can this first year without having to invest in a fence because that's just not gonna be in the budget this year. Even if we do like a movable one, it's just not in the budget. So I need to figure that out. My next goal is to grow as many flowers as I can. I just want flowers. I want to grow any and all kinds. I have a million seed packets worth. Cosmos, zinnias, um, I have dahlias. I have dahlia tubers on order. I have dahlia seeds. Literally any kind of flower I'm going to be happy with. So flowers everywhere is a huge goal. I'd like to eat fresh meals from the garden in addition to canning things. I just need to like keep in my head that once the garden starts producing, I really want to kind of like go out there and see like what might what what might be ready during that week so I like I have it in my mind what I can like meal prep for for the week because a struggle that gardening is going to cause for me is that I really like to have a plan for my meals for the week and you just don't know when things are going to be ready for sure and so like I'm gonna have to get a little bit more flexible with that I think and that's a good challenge to have but Eating fresh food from the garden and not letting it go bad is a very 
big goal for me this year. This is my last main goal and I think that this is probably just like an understanding of anyone who gardens on a large scale. I want to practice my canning, my fermenting, I want to save and like make fun tea blends of my own and like try out and see what I like. In general, I want to practice all those skills. Taylor and I really haven't had much home canned food. I added a little bit with my friend's grandparents as a kid that I've never had that much exposure to it and I don't think Taylor has had any like home canned food other than what I've made him which is basically like peaches and pears and applesauce and that kind of stuff. When it comes to salsas and pickles and things like that that's where we want to kind of like experiment and see what we like like hot sauce and all that kind of stuff. Those are all my like main garden goals for the year. It's really generic, I know, but this is my first year gardening here. This is gonna be my first large scale garden and I'm very, very excited about it. So really I just wanna grow stuff and I wanna get outside and dig my hands in the dirt and dig my feet in the dirt and enjoy myself. year and actually this is my third year using this system I just kind of have refined it a lot this year is my very own seed catalog and planting calendar. I posted a little community tab update about this and I have some more information on Instagram if you're interested in it or if you want to chat with me send me a message on Instagram at Calico Cow Acres. This has been like the best way to get me organized and I feel like most garden planners that I've seen are very like graphically pleasing, colorful, like they take up the whole page and they have, I don't know, they have like lines on the page for you to write in or certain sections. I don't know, just like they're nice. But for me, I want organization. I am very much a spreadsheets person, down and dirty, like give me the information. I want it clean. I appreciate the pretty stuff, but I need it to do its job. And so I really tried to make this garden planner like something that's really like visually pleasing but very functional so I have a printable version of it that I kind of use in combination when I'm feeling like sketching things out or writing things out by hand but I also have a spreadsheet version which is very very functional and is really what I refer to most of the time and then come transplanting and like direct sewing season, I will be printing that out and just bringing it outside with me so I can like mark things off and I don't have to bring my computer or my phone outside. I mean, it's super affordable. You can either get the printable version by itself or you can get the digital version, which is like a spreadsheet on Google Sheets that is free to use. And then that also comes with the printable version. So I hope you go check it out. I'm gonna quickly walk you through basically the different zones I need to plan for this year and for the future. I might not get to all of them this year, just again, cost-wise. This is my example page of like a garden layout. It's just basically a dot grid. And my plan is I need to lay out our main garden area, the half of it that I'm focusing on this year. And I really need to figure out how many cattle panel trellises I need to make for, you know, like for pole beans, for cucumbers, that kind of stuff, because we're gonna have to go get cattle panels we're gonna have to go get more tea posts. We have a couple of each of those things, but I know I'm gonna need like significantly more than I have. So that needs to get planned out this year. I want to have one of these dot grid sheets for the orchard layout so we can start planning specific varieties of trees that we want to start getting over the next few years. We will have a separate little cottage garden area that's like stepped down on one of the lower terraces next to our chicken coop area and that's going to be like very herby and flowery and all that kind of stuff so I want to plan that out and then next to that we're going to have a pond garden and that's going to be sort of on the outside of our chicken and duck run it's going to be like on the outside of the fence for that so I need to make it things that like they can peck at and get at but like they're not gonna like fully kill if they do that. And then like just when I wanna put around their pond, 
but that's gonna be a later on thing because their pond's gonna be pretty basic this first year. I wanna plan out some hugel culture beds. I don't necessarily know where I'm gonna do those yet, but we have lots and lots of rotting logs on this property because everything has just been neglected for years, I think. And then we also wanna start planning for like our edge beds around the, the garden area and just in general around the property, the edges of the house, we're gonna start planning out like perennial beds. Next, we're gonna walk through all my seed starting supplies. And like I said, I will try and link as much as I possibly can for you. <laughs> you see these markers? <laughs> I've had a lot of people ask me, these ones right here are a very, very fine, fine tip pen marker. I guess they're markers, but you can see like, it's a super fine tip. They come in a lot of colors, but I've had these for like seven plus years probably now, and they all work well still. It says that they are fine 0.4. And the brand is Stabilo. Again, I have a pack of these linked in my Amazon storefront. And then these ones are actually highlighters. Um, they're called mild liners because they're just like lots of fun colors and you can actually see quite well through them. They don't like cover stuff up really, but they have, they come with like a normal highlighter tip and they also come with a secret fine tip, which I like to use these a lot. I use these for my planner. I just do like different colors for each month. I use those, those two things and seed starting a lot. I also have a uh, whiteout strips linked because I use that a lot when I'm using the like, the physical printable planner <laughs> because I mess up a lot. All right, I'm gonna turn you around and hopefully you're not blinded. I have been getting blinded this entire time, but that's okay. So these shelves that I have, I just got these from Menards, which uh, we don't have Menards down here in North Carolina, but it would be the equivalent of Home Depot or Lowe's. It would have been ideal to get bigger ones. These are either three or three and a half feet wide. It would have been ideal to get wider ones, but they work okay. I just have the trays hanging off the edge just a couple inches and the lights are just a little too big. So like they work fine as long as you have space to separate the shelves by like a foot and a half. That's my only negative about those shelves. Those were the cheapest ones I could find that were like a metal shelf and I like them a lot. They're good for other things. If I ever decide I don't want to use these for seed starting anymore, they'll be completely useful for something else. But these are just like a generic wire metal shelf and I have black ones. You can get those anywhere. They're probably a lot more expensive now than when I bought them before. So unfortunately, I don't really have a link for you for those, but just go to whatever like home improvement store you have near you and like their website and search like four tier metal shelf or four tier wire metal shelf and you'll find something. I think these were like $50 and I think they're like 80 something dollars now each, which is unfortunate. I thought you might be able to see me better if I put you over here, but I'm not sure that's the case. So the lights, they are just LED shop lights. I have these linked on Amazon. I think these are an amazing deal. They aren't specifically plant lights, but they work really well. I use, I've used these for a couple years now, and these guys, these guys make some great seedlings, let me tell you. Like, they make, they do an amazing job. They don't need to be specifically plant lights as long as you have your other stuff right and you take care of them. These will work very well. And they're very affordable as far as lights go. And my favorite part about them is that they're linkable. So I have all of these. This is eight lights right now, and they're all plugged into one outlet, and they don't draw very much since they're LED lights, so they don't use a lot of electricity. So I highly recommend these. I actually have another set in the closet that I haven't set up yet. They come with these chains to hang from the ceiling, and I bent the, I bent the ends of them so that I can hook them in, and then I can change the height of them. I hope you guys can see this, but if I need to change the height, I'll just hook them in different places. So I can hook them over here on this second um, cross bar, or if I want them really low, I could just hook them on the edge. I'm only changing one side right now. Um, if you want them in the middle, just hook them and wrap them around and loop it through here. So that works really well for me. It can be kind of a pain to like adjust every single one of them, but you don't have to do it very often. So. It works well for me. This year I was like, you know what? We're gonna have a big garden. We're gonna be doing this a lot. 
every year for a long time, I might as well get some nice trays. So I ordered these from Bootstrap Farmer. These are the little humidity domes and they have like little twisties on them so you can change the amount of humidity. Okay, so for the next thing, I ordered the wrong one. Um, make sure you ordered the right one. <laughs> These will still work just fine. It'll just have to be like, I'll have to be a little bit more careful with my soil blocks. So yes, I use soil blocks for the most part. I enjoy making them and I think that they're really helpful for up potting and just like putting things right into the garden without waste. I got these mesh trays and my idea is that I am going to, so the the size that I got, I was supposed to get the normal, normal depth ones and I accidentally got the shallow ones. So my soil blocks are just gonna like stick up a little bit further, which is completely fine. But my plan is that I can put my soil blocks in this mesh tray and then I have the normal depth trays without holes in them. And so I can water my soil blocks really easily without getting them to be like too waterlogged. And then I can just like pour the water out or set this on my shelf. So. I'll probably leave them in these trays just so they're more stable and then just pour the water out when it's when they're done drinking. I I have previously used soil blocks in just the trays without holes and no mesh trays and I like doing that but I feel like I always put too much water in there and then they're like drowning so it just doesn't work very well. Figured the mesh trays were a good idea and I wish I would have ordered the right size but these ones will work just fine. I'll order the right size in the future. And then I have a bunch of these, I think they're two and a half inch pots. So they're either two or two and a half inch pots. This is also from Bootstrap Farmer. It's like the Whispering Willow Summer Solstice Collection, I think. I have this teal color. There's like a light purple, a green, yellow, and pink. Purple, green, yellow, and pink. They do have just plain black ones, and I think they might have plain white ones too. The reason I got the colored ones is so that when I pot things up, I can put all of one variety of something in one color and then switch a color because I absolutely despise labeling things. Like there's one thing I don't like about gardening, it's labeling things. And that's really weird for me because I love organization. <laughs> Hate labeling stuff, absolutely despise it. That's why I use that like paper organizer the paper tray layout so I don't have to label stuff in my trays. I get like super in depth with it and like I write on masking tape on my tray. I'll write top of tray and then I like match it up with the top of this tray so that I know what's what's in the tray and where it is and I don't have to label it until I pot it up. If I do it then even. <laughs> By then I should know what it is. I also just remembered that I didn't mention these. These are 200 cell plug trays that I also got from Bootstrap Farmer. These, the reason I got these, I just got a five pack. I'll probably get more in the future. The reason I got these is for starting onions because I got a lot of extra onion seeds and I just wanted to try direct sowing them but I, I wanted to have the backup of sowing them indoors as well. And then for flowers. So I think these are going to be helpful for both of those things and then I'll probably use them for like leeks and that kind of stuff too. I don't know which box they're in so I can't show them to you right now. If I can find a picture of one I will pop it on the screen for you. As far as soil goes, I just get potting mix. I. I try to get organic and not sterilized potting mix and that's as far as I go as far as technicalities go. I don't really get too caught up on that. I just, I like potting mix better than seed starting mix. I feel like it feeds the seedlings longer and um, there are a lot of other great videos of people who really break down why you should get X versus Y. I don't, I don't know it very well. I just use potting soil and it works well for me. So that's what I do. If you are starting anything that's like a pepper or a tomato, or I think eucalyptus benefits from it too. They're, they're anything that really likes heat. You're going to want to get a heat mat. They're like 10 or $15 on Amazon. I think I have one linked and if I don't, I will link one before I post this video. Those just go under your seedling trays and you just like have, a, there's like a little cord with like a prod, like a, a meat thermometer or something. And like you poke it into the soil and it tells you the temperature. So I actually have like three of those. I, I start a lot of peppers and tomatoes and like artichokes and eucalyptus and things that like heat. Lastly, these photo containers. If you are in the gardening world at all, you've probably seen a lot of people use these. Everybody uses these. I use these and I really like them. Some people label them with 
the plant or like you know type of plant name this is herbs um, some people do it by when they're going to start the seeds so they'll put the date on them I actually do both throughout the year it changes in the next couple weeks I'm gonna be transitioning these to be sorted by date so I'll have you know whatever every Tuesday when I'm starting these I will have that date on each one and put those seeds into each one so I know which seeds I need to start on any given day however once I have most of my stuff planted for my like first round of secessions for like the summer garden. Everything goes to, it's like absolute chaos then. I don't know where, I, seeds just go everywhere. I'm bringing stuff out to the garden, stuff's inside, it's all over the place. So once the initial like planting of the year is done, I transition them back to their names so that I can more easily find things if I just like randomly want to start something that's not on my plan, it's a lot easier for me to find them in with the names. Come fall when I'm ordering new varieties, I like to be able to pull out all of one type of plant, all of my herbs, so I know which ones I have. And then I just kind of like repeat that cycle over and over. That's it for you guys. I know that was a lot. That was a lot of talking and I need some water. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go start some seeds now. I hope you enjoyed this chat. I would love to know what some of your garden goals are for this year, what you're most excited to grow, your favorite varieties to grow, and any advice you might have for me actually. That would be great. Leave those things in a comment below. So much for watching we really appreciate you and we will see you in the next video thanks bye guys